Greetings fellow makers, welcome down to the shop. This is another episode of Prop Live where I live stream on Twitch and then edit down the video and re-upload it on YouTube later so you get to watch the highlights of all the trials and tribulations I went through to make the current project. Speaking of the current project, Bill and I are going down to Star Wars Celebration in Florida. We've never been to a Star Wars Celebration before, so we're just gonna go have fun. And I need a Star Wars costume. I also need kind of a casual costume to have at conventions. A lot of my costumes are kind of big and bulky. They're not really good to wear around all day long. So I thought I would make myself a Star Wars smuggler character. And it's gonna be my own design, which lets me have a lot of freedom with how I kind of come up with the aesthetics. One one of the things I want to have is some kind of cool tactical bracer thing that has like a readout and some cool buttons and stuff on it. That's what this guy is. For this pattern I started with my usual process of taking a duct tape dummy part of my body. I have an old one I made of my forearm and I bulked it out using some crumpled up pieces of paper. This design ended up being pretty straightforward, so I think you could skip the patterning process if you're just doing kind of a top bracer thing like I am. If you're doing a full bracer, I do recommend doing the templating process to make sure it fits around your whole arm. This whole project is gonna be made out of craft foam except for one found object. This cool tactical light thing Bill found on the ground when he was out for a walk one day, I believe it's one of those flashlights that goes on a bike. It has different settings where it lights up and it blinks. I took this, sanded it down, and added some paint to it to just give it a nice black base. So this cool light is going to attach to my craft foam bracer, and then I'm going to add some buttons on it. And on top of the craft foam, I might add some kind of pieces of plastic or something to make it look like a readout screen. But the great thing is, since it's my own design, I can do whatever I want. I can change it up as I go if it ends up not fitting right, or I would like something better later. This is my current design, and it goes on my left forearm. I don't want it to wrap all the way around, and I do want it to have some thickness to it, so it's gonna be this thing that's kind of raised up. I'll probably end up backing it with upholstery foam, and then I'm gonna have straps that go around the bottom of my forearm that might get backed with some more foam. We'll see how it goes. This cool light thing is gonna go right about here, and it's gonna be inset into the craft foam, and all of this area I think I'm going to to cut out and raise up from the same piece of foam. And I've kind of just started sketching out some ideas for some buttons and greebly bits, maybe some kind of slider down here. I don't know, maybe this will be a vent or a speaker. I think I want this to look like a monitor screen, so I might put some like, like a sheet of plastic in there. To get started, I'm gonna take a floor mat chunk that I have, and this is kind of a nicer quality one. I think we got this online. A little higher standard than like the Harbor Freight floor mats. It's a little denser. You can find these on Amazon. And I'm just gonna trace this whole piece onto my foam and then cut out all the details afterwards. And since this is pretty free form, I'm not taping down my template. I'm just gonna lightly hold it in place as I trace around. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I cut out the interior of my bracer. This whole piece is going to be separate and I think raised up a bit. So I've got both of those traced out and now I'm just on to cutting out all the pieces. I'm going to end up kind of rounding over all these edges with my rotary tool and a sanding drum. So we'll see how it goes. Just, just take your time. Let's see, cut that away. With the texture on the back, sometimes if you don't use enough force, it will not cut all the way through. So this part here looks pretty smooth, but this part got a little jagged, but I can just smooth that off later. Boop. So I'm just taking my time. Some of this is requiring two passes. The knife is kind of catching on the floor mat texture which is on the other side and that's all right this whole thing is going to get cleaned up a bit with my rotary tool and the edges will look all nice and clean when i'm done there haha -ha. there and already it has a lot more dimension just by popping up this piece a little bit if you wanted to you could just get some thinner craft foam you can find them at uh 
fabric and craft stores. Comes in like quarter inch sizes and just lay it on top here. But I want to see how much I can do with just one piece of floor mat. So I'm going to try and outset a lot of this stuff. I've got my shop vac set up and I'm going to do some sanding on these guys with my little battery powered rotary tool. It just has a little sanding drum bit on there. And I'm just going to smooth all the edges that are a little jaggedy and then I'm going to start tapering over the outside here and then tapering this piece right here to give it kind of a more of a smooth beveled look. And I have my respirator I'm going to be wearing during this because even though I'm using a shop vac there's probably going to be dust everywhere. I'd like this light to be inset a little bit into the foam, so I'm going to just cut a trench, probably at an angle. I'm really trying to do as much cutting beforehand as I can before I heat form this around my arm. This is going to be a lot more annoying to cut out when it is all cylinder shaped. And then I'm just going to kind of try insetting this guy. Yeah, that'll snug down in there. That's pretty good. That way it's not as obtrusive and I can keep this inside part if I want to. This is turning into a fun challenge of seeing how much I can get out of this little piece of floor mat. I could just add some thinner craft foam to the top, but instead I've just started cutting them out of the floor mat and I'm just gonna either raise them up or lower them down, whichever kind of way I feel like it. And this piece I think is gonna be some kind of monitor. I've only cut out three of the sides of each of them so I can kind of smoosh them in to add some dimension there. So it's starting to look pretty interesting. I think these detail parts up here could use some more texture. So I think I'm going to take a blade and score it lightly, not all the way through, and then I'm going to use a heat gun to bring out some of the details. By keeping these separate as I work on them, it lets me not have to worry about cutting into the underpiece. I'll glue these in eventually. Now that I've got the details cut in, I'm going to use a heat gun and you can watch these start to open up. There we go. And you can also see that since I used a heat gun that the pores of the foam are starting to close up and look a little more shiny. This is a, a first step to sealing foam. It's usually a good idea. As long as you don't have a lot of hot glue on here, you can heat seal it all up and have it not look so textured. Make sure I don't get any of the heat on my cutting mat because I don't want to start warping that. I think some of these pieces are ready to be glued in for good before I start to heat form this around my arm. For most of this, I think I'm just going to use super glue and tack everything into place. Once I get everything heat formed, I might add some more glue to the back of it to kind of reinforce things, maybe some hot glue. I'm just going to put in some super glue on the bottoms here and then slide it into place. The super glue gives me a little bit of a working time so I can get it in position as opposed to something like contact cement where it would get caught right away. I think there's going to be enough of a gap around the edges of this after I use a heat gun where I am going to want to reinforce the back of it. I don't think I'm going to put this piece of foam back in the slot here. Once I get this heated into shape, I think this is just going to snug down into the gap. So I have these extra little pieces to play around with. I cut off one of them and I'm going to turn it into something that looks like it's a slider. I want to rough up the textured side of the foam so it will glue and stay in place. I also think this slider needs some kind of texture on it to make it look a little more interesting. So I'm just going to cut some notches into it. Now I'm just going to super glue this in place forever. Time has come to heat up my whole bracer piece and form it into a bracer shape. I think I'm going to use this cardboard tube so I don't have to form it around my arm with one hand. Some of this does have some gaps in it. If it does start to pop apart, that's okay. I can always glue it back in the shape later. I 
I've been thinking about how I want to attach this old bike light to the gauntlet. It does have this little slot here from where I suppose it used to be attached to the bike before it fell off, and that's where we found it on the side of the road. I put some of the loop enclosure side of the Velcro in there with, with some hot glue. I took the last chunk of craft foam that was a recess from this guy. I put the hook side of the Velcro on that, and I think that's pretty good. Um, the main problem is I want to make sure this is removable so I can take the batteries in and out. On further consideration, I really think I need more support for this guy. Uh, it is Velcroed down in the back here. I have this little nylon webbing strap that was from, I think, a camera strap. We have this little container of all these extra bits that we keep around. So I'm gonna loop this around the top. I think one of these sides I'm just gonna glue down permanently. I'll sand down the texture here and just glue a little piece of craft foam over it. And then the other side I'll make removable, maybe with some Velcro. I am gonna finish adding all of the straps to this guy before I paint it in case I need to make any changes or modifications. First, I'm gonna add some upholstery foam blocks into this to suspend it away from my arm a little bit. I want it to look pretty bulky on my smaller arm, so I don't want it to sit down here. I want it to be raised up a bit, and that will allow some airflow in my arm too, so it won't get too warm since this foam does not breathe. And this is just squishy foam that we picked up online. You can find this stuff in the camping section of your like a Walmart or a Fred Meyer type store because this is used for like camping mat. I'm just gonna mark where these are gonna be so I can sand down the texture a little bit. And with upholstery foam you just want to lightly hold it in place. You don't want to squish it down too much. You don't want the hot glue to go all the way through the foam. I think this will be pretty good. After some trial and error, I've got my nylon webbing straps figured out. We have all of these buckle attachments and strap adjusters. We buy these kinds of things in bulk so that we always have straps and buckles that match together. So we have a small size and then we have our, our larger size of them. So I've got those set up. I've permanently attached them to the inside of the gauntlet on this side so that the buckles aren't going to be moving around back and forth. This part's going to be adjustable, so I need a loop attachment. I have these smaller bits of scrap nylon webbing strap. So I want to be careful to not get any of the hot glue on the strap that is needing to be adjustable. I've got this snugged down pretty tight. I'm not sure if I'm going to be wearing a jacket under it or like a longer glove setup. I think a glove would look pretty neat. Um, so I can always loosen these again, but that seems like it's pretty good. It seems like it's on there. Got my light on here. It's got a button so I can turn it on. It's still covered in tape because I still have to paint this guy. Now is my last chance before I start painting it to see if I want to add any more little greebly bits. I'm cutting in some extra details on these buttons to kind of give them more of a purpose. I think I want this one to be a circle and I have a sharpened brass tube. I feel like it needs like a little center hole on it. If I just need one little point I can probably just stab it with a pen. There, it's a little better. I've got a rotary tool bit on here that is a sanding drum, but the sanding part is scooched up a little bit, so it's over the lip of the screw. So that way when I use it and press straight down, I can get some cool looking rivets. And I think I'm gonna call this good for now. I'm gonna be using the Angelus acrylic paints to paint this guy. They're a leather paint, they're very flexible, and I'm going to be painting this on the live stream next week. So stay tuned to see the conclusion of this guy as I add the different layers of paint, decide what kind of metals I want, paint all of this to match. This is fitting pretty well. I am happy with the strap system. And since I'm gonna be brushing on acrylic paints, I won't really need to worry about masking off all of these guys. Guys. I might end up putting some kind of cover down here for this to cover up the straps if I end up not liking them too much but I think this is pretty good though I got my buttons here this is gonna be a screen I have some green plastic that I might be cutting out to glue into this screen after I do the base colors of paint I have my light here that I'll remove the masking on it after I do the base layer of paint as well and there we have it I have a cool gauntlet thing I'm pretty happy with the detail. That's a great thing about creating my own design though, is I can just change it up as I go. 
It is pretty neat that this chunk of the floor mat is all I ended up using to make this guy. I'll be painting this guy up on the next live stream, so tune in. It'll be Tuesday at noon Pacific time on Twitch TV slash Punish Props. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Ha, ha, ha.